Hello. In this video, we will discuss Quick Call 2 over P25, or two-tone paging, on P25 trunking. As you can see here, we have our default file. First thing we need to do is go and check that our P25 trunking system is set. Our trunking system will be this trunking system, which is the MARCS, which is the Ohio statewide system. Secondly, we need to go to tab 3, which is protocol parameter settings. In the more recent updates of the G-Series PPS, some protocol parameters were added for two-tone over P25 trunking. In the P25 trunking protocol, you will see now the digital tone system settings and the digital tone qualify settings. I'm going to go over each setting so that we all understand what they do. First, short digital tone A duration in system. This is your tone A. This is the length that, of the tone that is being sent by the uh, dispatch center. It's highlighted here, and by default it's set to 1,000 milliseconds or one second. The short digital B tone, or tone B duration in system, is just that. It is the duration of the B tone, or the second tone in the pair. By default, it's set to 2,000 milliseconds. However, most generally, uh, people will use 3,000, so that it mirrors what they are used to on analog, a 1 second A tone and a 3 second B tone. So I will change that now. Long digital tone duration in the system, or tone C, that is your long tone duration. We here send 7 second long tones. So I will add that there. The gap between two digital tone addresses in the system, which is our tone gap 2, uh, that is the gap between two digital addresses. So it's the gap between the B tone of the first two-tone pair and the A tone of the second two-tone pair in a stacked paging situation. Our digital tone qualify settings allow us to adjust uh, how much tone is required to detect uh, a, uh, a tone activation. So the minimum short digital tone detect time is set to 200 milliseconds. That means the unit only requires 200 milliseconds of each tone to alert. This setting I usually change to 500 milliseconds. This is to allow half a second of, of each tone to be uh, detected. This cuts down on falsing. If you have issues where uh, some short tones are causing your uh, two-tone pair to, to alert falsely, uh, you would want to increase uh, this, this number, uh, but you do not want it to be longer than your tone A. Uh, otherwise, it will not detect your your two-tone pair. The minimum long digital tone detect time is by default set to 2500. Now this presents uh, an issue that that may happen if your dispatch center uses a long tone as an all call that matches the B tone of a two-tone pair. So for instance, if your two-tone pair, A and B, is 617.4 and 688.3, if they use a 688.3 long tone as the all call for the entire county, then you could run into issues where the normal two-tone, one-second, three-second pair could false as a long tone. So we want to extend this to be above your 3,000. So what I normally set this to is about 4,000. That ensures that a, a, a three second B tone will not uh, false as a long tone. Uh, now your minimum, get, uh, minimum gap detect time between two digital addresses, this is the, the gap time we set up here. Um, this basically tells us uh, what it is required. So 
there must be one second by default between the tone B of, of tone pair 1 and tone A of tone pair 2. These are all the, the settings uh, for the P25 trunking protocol. So from here we can move on to the group ID setting. Now to set up P25 two-tone, there are a few uh, intricacies that uh, need to be um, taken into account. First thing we need is a, is a talk group ID. This is the talk group ID that will be transmitted on by the dispatch and the tones will be encoded onto that talk group ID. In my case, I'm going to use this D605 uh, test talk group that I have. Now on P25 two tone, the TGID must also have an alert tone assigned in order for the tone to be audible. Now, as long as a tone is assigned in a later step, and I will bring this back up, as long as a tone is assigned, the pager will never uh, use this alert tone, uh, as long as a two-tone pair is assigned to that talk group. And I'll go over that in the future. So I'm going to add one two-tone pair to this. We can add more, uh, but, but I'm going to add one. And the way we do that is we're going to create a new line here. And I'm going to use this as my two-tone pair. Okay, so I'm going to select Tone and Vibrate because I want it to Tone and Vibrate. I'm going to use Default Tone 3, or I'm, I'm going to use Tone 3 because it is uh, my preferred tone. I am not going to enter a TGID into this line. This uh, TGID, uh, P25 TTGID uh, box will stay set to no setting. And because the marks is a phase one system, I'm going to use the phase one list. And I'm going to use tones 12 and tones 14. Now, as you can see from this list, we um, use a tone range. Now, what is meant by this, uh, th some of these do correspond with uh, the original analog two-tone uh, pairs, uh, or quick call two pairs. But with P25 trunking, an entirely different tone set was created uh, to allow 31.25 hertz between each tone pair. So what, what this uh, is, is essentially the the encoded tone should be the center tone between these two uh, ends, the 146.9 uh, and the 1078.1. So it would be the center frequency between those two is what we would want to encode. Um, if you are using the old quick call two tones, you can get away with doing that, but there is a chance that some tones will fall into the same range. Or a tone will be too close to the end of one of the decode ranges and will deviate low or high uh, and be registered in a, the, the lower or higher tone category. So, for instance, if we use the tone of, of 1050, uh, 1050, if it deviated low, could deviate into 25. However, if we used a tone of uh, 1075, if it deviates high, it could be read into the 27 slot. And we have a list of the two-tone pairs available on our website. So as we see, I've set in my P25T subgroup my two-tone phase one. Uh, the only difference between two-tone phase one and phase two is that two-tone has uh, 72 tones and phase two has 91. So, uh, and these are two independent tone lists. So now that we have our two-tone pair and we have our TGID in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to zone and channel setting. And then in knob position one, I'm going to set up what we would consider a selective call or what we would call a selective call on 
uh, my analog. But we're going to do that on P25 trunking. So our receiving mode is going to be trunking talk group scan. When 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 doing uh, files, you always want to use trunking talk group scan. Uh, trunking talk group monitor will cause the unit to monitor the site, and you will hear all the traffic on that site. So we're going to set this up as a selective call, and we're going to do QC2. Okay. Now uh, we have our P25 trunking system set. Our protocol alias is set and we can select our binding feature. Uh, now our binding feature we want to set to subgroup feature. And now here's where we move into reset modes. Now this reset mode determines uh, how of course the unit is reset after the, the two-tone pair. So in auto reset uh, as soon as the carrier drops the uh, unit will automatically reset. So we do not want that to, to happen because it's going to be silent. So what we're going to do is use a selective timeout or selective manual. Monitor timeout and monitor manual have the same issue as using trunking talk group monitor. Uh, essentially what it would do is after uh, it receives the two-tone pair, it would switch into a monitor mode and monitor everything on the site. So we want to use the selective um, timeout or selective manual. I'm going to use selective timeout. It's set for a 30 second timer. Uh, and the, my delay in function is set to five seconds by default. And my record delay is also five seconds by default. Now I want one thing to keep in mind is, is it, during the delay in timer, the unit only cares about hearing the traffic on the TGID. It will not decode two tone during that delay in timer. So we have that set to five seconds by default. Uh, we could choose to do push to listen, yes or no, which would cause us to have to hold the button down on the side of the unit to hear the, the audio. So we're going to leave ID match on. We're going to set the unread message to always. And now we get down here to our knob talk group list. Now if you notice, we have a knob talk group list and a revert talk group list. The way these work is the knob talk group list is how the unit behaves before the alert. The revert talk group list is how it behaves during that 30 second uh, reset time, that revert time. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the TGID from the talk group list to the priority talk group list. Then we're going to come down to our subgroup setting. Uh, this is a setting that is specific to subgroups. So this will have a list of the, the available TGIDs. Uh, if we had more, there would be more in here. Um, and then we're going to edit the one that we, we'd like to add a two-tone pair to. And as you can see, we have our two-tone pair. And if we hover over this top one, it will show us top one and then our tone A and tone B. And we're going to click Enable. There is a setting in this screen that I would like to uh, point out and that is alternatives. Uh, alternatives uh, is essentially an and or statement. Uh, alternatives when disabled, which is by default disabled, uh, the unit will stay silent until it receives both the uh, uh, carrier, the transmission, and receives the two-tone pair. Without the two-tone pair, the unit will be completely silent. So for this, when we, since we're doing a selective call, we want to leave that unchecked. We'll click OK. We'll close out of this. Now we move down to our revert talk group list. I will move the TGID from the left hand side to the right into our priority talk group list and then come down to subgroup settings as I did before in the revert in the knob talk group list. Back in this screen again, we're one we want to enable the two-tone pair that way if it does come in again while it has been reverted it will still alert again. Also we want to check this enable, uh, enable alternatives uh, checkbox. That will allow the voice to come through uh, without requiring a two-tone pair to, to unmute, unmute the unit. We can save that and close out of here. 
And this is one completed knob position. Uh, it should behave uh, because we have alternatives disabled. It should be silent until the two-tone pair uh, is heard and decoded, and then it will revert for 30 seconds to a revert talk group list, which will hear all the traffic on the dispatch talk group, and uh, it will uh, also uh, alert if another two-tone pair comes through. So we're going to save this knob position. And one great thing about the PPS is we can, we can right-click and copy and paste one knob position into another, and it creates an exact copy. So we're going to go into knob position 2, and we're going to make this a monitor knob position. So if I do, if I change this from selective call to MON or monitor, we can move down and we can leave everything the same, uh, or we can use auto reset, which is something that uh, um, you can use while in the monitor mode. And keep in mind, we are still using trunking talk group scan. We are not using trunking talk group monitor. So the good thing about copying that original knob position we had, we can take that and move and, and just change one thing in this knob position and make it a monitor knob position. So if we come down here to our knob talk group list, and then we go to our subgroup setting, and then we go to edit, all we will need to do is check this alternative enable box. And by doing that, it will allow the voice to, to come through the speaker without requiring a two-tone pair. And then when the two-tone pair alerts, it will go and it will revert to the secondary list in which we could add fireground channels, uh, auxiliary channels, uh, or auxiliary talk groups, uh, things like that. Uh, if we wanted to. That way you could leave it on your talk group ID, uh, your dispatch talk group ID, here, every, everything on there, and then if you had a, uh, a fireground TGID that you would like it to default to, you could add that into this list as well. So, all we have to do is save, and now we have a selective call and a monitor mode position set up with quick call to uh, and you sh will have the ability to program this into the unit and uh, when the two-tone pair comes across the, the system it should receive it, decode, and perform as expected. I thank you for purchasing a G-Series voice pager uh, and if you need any help please do not hesitate to let us know. Thank you and have a wonderful day.